Welcome to this uh, another episode, another presentation on the on the series that uh, we are still having. That is um, the series of uh, the Tabernacles. I believe that uh, the Lord's blessings are resting upon us, and there are things which we are learning at the School of Christ, uh, knowing that. Um, Christ will want us to learn of him and uh, we be educated in his school that uh, we come short of no spiritual gifts in uh, our lives. And I know that uh, in learning, there is also unlearning. And the best thing is to accept that which comes from God. And so I want us to pray and uh, look at uh, another presentation this evening or this time. That is the number five in our series. And uh, it is part five, the ministry of the angels. Shall we pray? God in heaven, glory and honor be unto thy name, Lord. As we look unto these things that the angels even desire to look into. May you replenish our spiritual men that uh, we may serve you. And uh, all the difficulties that uh, we face in life, we may know that uh, your angels are attending unto us. Thank you so much for your love and your grace. For these things, we thank you and we give you glory in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so um, the ministry of the angels, this is one uh, of uh, the topics that uh, we ought to learn when we are going through the sanctuary for we are told that uh, in Hebrews, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter one, verse seven, Hebrews chapter one, uh, verse seven, Hebrews chapter one, verse seven. This is number five in the series. This is number five in the series, and we are looking at the ministry of the angels. Uh, Hebrews chapter one, verse seven says, and uh, of the angels he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And uh, Verse 14, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So the ministry of angel is something that uh, we cannot turn a blind eye on. The ministry of the angels is not something that we can turn a blind eye on. Going more into the scriptures, getting more into the scriptures. Uh, in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 25, verses 18, Exodus chapter 25, verse 18, uh, we read that, uh, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And uh, Exodus 25, 19, and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall he make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Verse 22 of Exodus 25, and there I will meet with thee, and I'll commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I'll give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And so we find that uh, in the sanctuary, the Lord ordained that the angels be on the veil of the sanctuary, and also we have the covering cherubims overshadowing the mercy seat, and uh, he says that there 
in between the two cherubims covering the mercy seat, I'll commune with thee. Now, that is so much important that um, we may understand that uh, he gives his messages to the angels and they are the communicants of the same message unto humanity. In the book of um, Zechariah chapter three, Zechariah chapter three, we are looking at number five in the series of the, the series of the tabernacles, and we are looking at the ministry of uh, the angels. How important is the ministry of the angels? We have found out in Hebrews chapter one verse seven that they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto the heirs of salvation. That is, um, uh, that is Hebrews chapter one verse. 7. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, angels are ministers unto heirs of those who are heirs of salvation. And in Exodus chapter 25, we are finding that um, the angels were uh, the angels were the, the, the angels were embroidered on the veil of the sanctuary. And also the angels were covering cherubims on the mercy seat. And God says in Exodus chapter 25, verse 22, there in the midst of the two covering cherubims, he shall speak unto men, which means that uh, through these angels, the messages from heaven are given to the human beings. And so we cannot negate the presence of the angels uh, in the sanctuary or in the midst of those um, uh, who are heirs of salvation. In the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter 3, the book of Zechariah, uh, chapter 3, we read uh, something uh, in it. The book, the, the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, sorry, not uh, Zechariah, chapter 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4, Verses um, 14, we are told that uh, then he said he, then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And these are the two cherubims. If you read that in the truth about angels, page 150, uh, paragraph one to three, we find that the two anointed ones are the two cherubims or the two angels that are sent forth to minister in the whole world. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1, we shall we, we are studying about the truth about angels, the ministry of the angels in the heavenly sanctuary, and why it is important unto us. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. And so we find that uh, angels are carriers of the messages from uh, the heavenly sanctuary. And so how do we differentiate between the heavenly and fallen angels, the holy angels and the unfallen angels? We are told, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, there is no light in them. That is the only way we can distinguish between the holy angels and the uh, fallen angels. You see, people say that this is not an important lesson because uh, we can uh, uh, get redemption and work out our salvation without the angels. But we must understand one thing. We have fallen angels. And um, they are striving to have mastery upon us. And so for the Lord to counteract the work of the evil angels, he sends the holy angels. And that is how we shall differentiate between the holy angels and the, and the fallen angels. By the word of God, by the scriptures, we can be able to detect that these are fallen angels and these are holy angels. And um, um, Exodus 26, verse 1, Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten cubits, 
Exodus um, Exodus 26 verse 1. Exodus 26 verse 1. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work with cherubims shall it be made. Exodus 36, verse 8, and every wise heartened man among them that wrote the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen with cherubims made he it of um, cunning work. Continued on, Exodus uh, 37, Verse 7, and he made two cherubims of gold beaten of one piece, made he them on two ends of the mercy seat, one cherub on the end of this side and another cherub on the other end of that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another. One to another. And um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, we are told, and to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Psalms 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. So you find that another work of the angels in the sanctuary is to encompass around them that fear the Lord and deliver them. While the uh, fallen angels are doing their work of trying to, to destroy humanity, the holy angels are commissioned so that uh, they may be able to protect the children of God. They may be able to protect the children of God. And uh, also that um, these holy angels, we are told that um, they, they will uh, be able to hold the four winds of the earth that they may not blow until the children of God are saved. This is um, uh, Revelation chapter chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7. The angels are participating in the plan of redemption directly. And in the previous presentation, I talked about the efficacy of uh, the angels, the inhabitants of unfallen worlds, and even this planet. And so because they are kept from apostasy, they love to participate in the plan of redemption so that they may understand better the character of God at the end of the day. So Revelation chapter 7, uh, in, in uh, Psalms 34, 7, we are told the angel of the Lord encompasseth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. And in Revelation chapter 7, we read, after, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree. And um, I saw another angel ascending from east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. You also you find that the angels of God are protecting his children from the destruction of the fallen angels until they are sealed in their forehead. That is their main work. Another work you find of the angels is uh, in Revelation chapter 5. If you want to see how important are the holy angels. And we ought to thank God that he has provided all the resources of heaven to humanity so that um, there may remain uh, nothing that is needful for human beings to be saved. In Revelation chapter 5, we find in verses um, 8, 
And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So the angels of God are ascending and descending. Um, they are ascending to heaven and descending upon the earth. And what are they carrying? They are carrying the prayers of uh, the saints. So uh, they teach us even how to pray uh, because we pray amiss. They strike the chords on our lips to know even what we ought to pray for according to the will of God. And so in Exodus chapter 36, verse 8, we find that the angels were woven on the veils of the sanctuary. Uh, and they were designed by um, a, a gifted artisan. Uh, you can also find that in Exodus 36, 35 and Exodus 25, 20 to 22. We shall not rehearse the same. And so... Um, we... Find also in Psalms 80 verse 1 that uh, God dwells between the cherubims. Give, all, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, who you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. And uh, as we continue studying, we shall find that uh, these angels are the eyes of God upon the earth. They are his eyes upon the earth ministering to the people of God walking among us as unseen. Uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, the angels of the Lord are walking among us unseen and they are the eyes of God. Hebrews chapter 13 uh, verses one. Let brotherly love continue, we read. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And so try to think about that if uh, one day the veil will be removed and uh, you are shown that uh, one of the visitors you entertained was an angel. You remember the story in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 29, Genesis chapter 29. Uh, let us look unto it. Genesis chapter 19, sorry. Genesis chapter 19. Sorry for that. Genesis chapter 19. People have welcomed angels without knowing. And we read, and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lord said, sat, and Lord sat in the gate of um, Sodom. At even, and Lord sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lord seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. And so um, later on, we find that um, these strangers actually uh, were angels sent to send Lord, to save Lord uh, from Sodom's destruction. And so some people have entertained angels unknown, and they have been the means of uh, their protection from a calamity that they never knew all about. And so we are told in, the, in uh, Hebrews 13.1 that uh, do not uh, 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 forget to entertain strangers. By doing this, people have entertained angels unknown. In the book of Kings, and uh, this is Second Kings, Second Kings, and I'm looking at uh, chapter four. Uh, is it uh, Second Kings chapter chapter four? That is Second Kings chapter six. Sorry, Second Kings chapter six. 
These angels, we have said that they protect the children of God from calamity. We know the story of Elisha and the angels in 2 Kings chapter 6 from verses 8 to verses 23. It's a long uh, thing, but uh, nonetheless, I'll read it. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 to 23. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall uh, my in such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the people which the man of God told him and warned him off and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that uh, thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore send he thither horses and chariots and great host. And they came by night and combust the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host combust the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we uh, do? Uh, verses 16, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Verse 17 of 2 Kings chapter 6, it says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes and he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, that is Gehazi, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, and I, I pray thee with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And so we find that um, there is a host of um, the army of heaven who are there to make sure that the children of God are safe from the destruction of their enemies. And so the angel of the Lord uh, are really preserving the children of God so that nothing may happen unto them. And so there are so many scriptures that speaks about the angels uh, uh, being in the sanctuary and they are not there just for idleness. They also inspect the events on earth and the, and, um, the the records of men, how they are progressing with their salvation. Daniel chapter seven, the book of Daniel chapter seven, the book of Daniel chapter seven. These angels record with terrible exactness the deeds of men. And so when judgment is set, they are also involved in the examination of these records. Daniel chapter 7 and uh, verses 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery steam stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 um, times 10,000 stood before him the judgment was set and the books were open. So these angels also chronicle the events in the lives of men. And when the judgment was set, they are participating faithfully in uh, looking into those records of what is happening. And so this should not make us fear about the angels or this should not make us worship the angels. This only brings to our comfort that God has not left us alone in this journey, but there are holy angels, ministering spirit, sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation, and they are watching us, they are protecting us, and they are spreading their wings upon us so that nothing that is disastrous may happen unto us, both physically and spiritually. 
And uh, we are told that um, when uh, we are turning aside, we shall hear a voice saying that um, this is the way, follow it. And uh, this should be in the book of um, Isaiah, the book of uh, Uh, the book of Isaiah, and uh, in a while I'll give you the verse, you shall hear a voice saying that uh, you shall hear a voice behind you. That is Isaiah chapter 30, verses uh, 21. Isaiah chapter 20, 30, verses, uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verses uh, 21, I'll read for you. So, the, the, Bible, the Bible says, and thine ears and thine ears shall hear a word behind this saying, this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. And so we have this assurance that the angels of God are able to prevent us from sinning. I know that sin could only be overcome by the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. That is the omnipresence of Christ or the spirit of Christ. But also we are told that the angels expel sin from the heart. The angels keep our thoughts uh, 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 um, uh, from straying away. And how does they do that? They whisper unto us, this is the way, follow it. They speak to our conscience. The Lord has enabled them to do that. Evil angels cannot read the, 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 the thoughts of men, but uh, holy angels have been given that capability of being able to read our thoughts and expel sin from uh, our hearts. And so, uh, that is why you find that there are angels, retinue of angels in the in the in the in the sanctuary and on the veil of the sanctuary. Now, um, I'll skip over these verses that um, we have read. The mission of the angels, Matthew chapter four verse eleven, angels were sent to minister to Jesus. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. We have read Hebrews 1.14, the angels are ministering spirits uh, to human beings. Are they, not, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And um, in uh, John chapter 1, verse 51, the angels do the biddings of Jesus. They take our prayers to him and bring his others back to us. We read that in the book of Revelation. John 1.51 says, and he said to him, most assuredly, I say, to you. Hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. And uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, the angels are not passive bystanders in the great controversy. They are actively engaged, they are observing the mystery of redemption and participating in ministering to the needy human beings. They fill the sanctuary and are watching. They impart God's message to the prophet, seek to persuade sinners to repent, protect the power of the evil one, bring God's word to mind in times of need, speak to the voice of our conscience. For I think, 1 Corinthians 4.9, for I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death, for we have been made a spectacle there, uh, on uh, to the world, both to angels and to men. In Luke chapter 15, verse 10, we are told that angels rejoice when sinners repent. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. And uh, in Luke chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, Jesus confessed our names before the angels. Also, I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him, the son of man, also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will, de will be denied before the angels of God. And uh, 
why do we have to look into this? Because everyone of us has a guardian angel and it is so painful when our guardian angel falls his wing and go back to heaven with the, the report that we have rejected the glad tidings that they have brought unto us. Everyone has an, a, a guardian angel and it will be so sad that uh, there are angels who will be missing the people they were sent to be guardians to because they could not accept the messages from heaven. And um, I want us to go into more of uh, uh, what E.G. White reveals about these angels. In the second segment, let us go into the spirit of prophecy. I have tried to lay down what the foundation in the Bible how the angels, why the angels are in the sanctuary and how they are ministering to us. But let us go a little bit uh, further and uh, look into the spirit of prophecy, what it says about these angels. Starting from uh, PP 53.1, we read this, like the angels, the dwellers in Eden had been placed upon probation. Their happy estate could be retained only on condition of fidelity to the creator's law. They could obey and live or disobey and perish. These are angels. God had made them the recipients of rich blessings, but should they disregard his will, he who spared not the angels that sin could not spare them. Transgression who forfeit his gifts and bring upon the misery and ruin. So the angels, seeing that the efficacy of the cross has covered them, they really delight in the yoke of obedience to um, be able to refill heaven with the saints who shall be saved from the position or from the empty spaces that were left there with the fallen angels. The angels are very joyful to uh, uh, be able to participate in the service of filling the vacancy of uh, the places that were left uh, behind by fallen angels. And so they delight in uh, making sure that we do not fall. Christ was not compelled to endure this cruel treatment. The yoke of obligation was not laid upon him to undertake the work of redemption. Voluntarily, he offered himself a willing, spotless sacrifice. He was equal with God, infinite and omnipotent. He was above all finite requirements. He was himself the law in character. Of the highest angels, it could not be said that they had never borne a yoke. The angels all bear the yoke of dependence, the yoke of obedience. They are the appointed messengers of whom, of him who is the commander of all heaven. So they delight in being obedient and being sent by Jesus Christ. Now, if this is the position of the angels delighting to work for Christ, how much more we who are being saved should verily delight in entering in the service of saving others as even we are recipients of uh, the masses of God. Uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 456, paragraph 3. Human agencies are the hands of heavenly instrumentalities. For heavenly angels employ human hands in practical ministry. Human agencies as hand help us are to work out the knowledge and use the fac facilities of heavenly beings. Uh, by uniting with these powers that are omnipotent, we are benefited by their higher education and experience. Thus, as we become partakers of the divine nature and separate, and separate selfishness from our life, special talents for helping one another are granted us. This is heaven's way of administering saving power. That is, um, the, the heavenly angels are omnipotent in powers and they have a higher education and experience which they pass on to us. And uh, let me repeat this, we, we are not worshiping angels and uh, the angels are not the spirits. You know, whenever this thing is presented, people say, you see, these people are just about to worship the angels or they are saying that the angels are the spirit. No, far be it that uh, somebody can leave this uh, presentation having such a notion. We are looking at the importance. Why are they in the sanctuary? What kind of work are they doing? Since there is a decided sympathy between heaven and earth, and since God commissioned angels to minister unto all who are in need of help, we know that if we do not do our part, 
This heavenly representative of omnipotent power will give help in this time of need. If we will become one in mind and heart with the heavenly intelligences, we can be worked by them. Men to whom God has entrusted capabilities and talents of means will be impressed by him to take on the burden of responsibility and help our Scandinavian brethren. And then, if there are only a few assembled, there are enough to claim the precious promises of God. The Father, the Son, and Holy Angels will be present with you to behold your faith, your steadfast principle, and the you will have of the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. God has rich blessings in store for those who will bring not only all the tithes into the storehouse, but also time and strength of, of bone and brain and muscle into his service. Those who will do this will walk in the light and will triumph in God. Sometimes we say that, oh, I have received the Sabbath truth. There is no one in my village to worship with or uh, to give me that warmth. Uh, 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 to be able to worship the Lord and rest on the Sabbath and keep it holy. I want to encourage us, and the word of God encourage us, inspiration encourage us, that um, wherever we are, that the holy angels are there, the Father is there, the Son is there, and the holy angels are there, so that uh, we may not feel comfortless. We may be comforted by their presence, and uh, they keep the evil angels at bay so that we may not be discouraged. So don't look at the circumstances that are before you. The Father is there, and the, and the Son is there, and the holy angels are there. Don't fail to worship God because you are alone. You are having there a multitude of angels who rejoiced every now and then to worship the Father and the Son, saying, holy, holy, holy. And they are carrying our praises, our worship, and even our prayers unto the Father and the, the Son. And so we don't need to be discouraged by anything. We don't need to say, I am alone where I am. No, God has sent his angels to be in our midst. And whether you are alone in the house, worship God with all the joy you know you can, knowing that the angels of God are there. Let us be encouraged by these things. And uh, uh, I, I just thank God for the angels, by the way. They, there's nothing else I can say. I thank God for the angels because they are there uh, uh, to make sure that I do not fall. God is keeping us by his angels. We need to understand, this is called Potua Ministry, page 110, paragraph one. We need to understand better than we do the mission of, of the angels. It will be well to remember that every true child of God has the cooperation of heavenly beings. Invisible armies of light and power attend the meek and lowly ones who believe and claim the promises of God. Cherubim and seraphim and angels that excel in strength stand at God's right hand. All ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. And uh, we are told that uh, do not offend these little ones for their angels stand in the presence of God. They are there, you, you, you know, uh, and I have many scenarios where I have uh, really have been uh, convicted that if the angels of God were not present, something calamitous could have happened. Think about uh, little children who go about playing in the house and they play with things that uh, if uh, it were not for the presence of the angels, they will be injured. Think of children even falling from their beds and uh, there was no injury unto them. And we can see how this much is important and uh, we don't have to have a dismina upon their ministry. In uh, Kolpotua ministry, page 110 to 111, we continue reading. In working for perishing souls, you have the companionship of angels. Thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands angels are waiting to cooperate with members of our churches in communicating the light that God has generously given, that our people may be prepared for the coming of Christ. Those who labor for the good of others are working in union with heavenly angels. They have their constant companionship, their unceasing ministry. Angels of light and power are ever near to protect, to comfort, to heal, to instruct, to inspire. The highest education, the truest culture, and the most exalted service possible to human beings in this uh, world are there. So angels bringing 
a healing balm. They carry the healing balm in their wings and bring that healing to us. The Father can heal us directly. I can't dispute that. Jesus Christ can heal us uh, uh, directly. No doubt about that. But also we are told that the angels heal us. And uh, to me, that is something so compelling. Um, nothing is apparently more helpless, yet really more invincible than the soul that feels its nothingness and relies wholly on the merits of the Savior. God will send every angel in heaven to the aid of such a one, rather than allow him to be overcome. When you are just about to sin, when the evil angels are pushing darkness upon you, remember one thing in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was there, and his humanity could have given away because he was a human being. But what then? He, he, he prayed and he had this uh, as sweat as the drops of blood. And then the Lord sent the angel to strengthen him. And so in our weakness, when we are just about to give up and Satan is about to have that uh, weird smile on his face that uh, he is about to overcome us, God sends angels to make sure that we don't fall. About the conversing work, we are told this, about the conversing work. Our conversers are having marked success, and why should they not? The heavenly angels are working with them. Hundreds of those who believe the truth will, if they keep their hearts humble, do a good work. In the companionship of heavenly angels, God will use those who humble the heart before him and sanctify themselves in faith and humility following the example of the great teacher and speaking words that will enlighten those not of our faith. We are to work patiently and disinterestedly as the servants of the Lord, opening the scriptures to others. Much responsibility rests upon the converser. He should go to his work prepared to explain the scriptures. If he puts his trust in the Lord as he travels from place to place, angels of God will be round about him, giving him words to speak that will bring light and hope and courage to many souls. Now, in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verses 21, if I'm not wrong, let me uh, not paraphrase it. I, I want to read something that uh, I want to connect to these angels. Hebrews, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 20, not verse 21, sorry, verses 20. For it is not, and it starts a little bit earlier, but when they shall deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Now, uh, we understand that we have read that God sends his angels to give us the words we speak to the people who are not of our faith. So the spirit of Christ was in the prophets when they wrote the Bible. And the spirit of Christ and the spirit of God is in the angels. The father reveals his will to Jesus Christ, Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. And Jesus Christ reveals his will to Gabriel or other guardian angels. And Gabriel gave the message to John what to speak. And the angels, our guardian angels, will give us what to speak to strangers or to speak to those who are not of our faith. And so we should not feel that uh, when we are going to con converse, it is our work and our strength which is working out. No, angels employ our hands and our faculties to this work. And so it is heaven itself working directly for the salvation of men. And we cannot brag. I went to a, supply, a place, sold 90 books. People came to the truth and they were baptized. That is uh, uh, actually, that is pride, that is selfishness, and that is not knowing what heaven is doing. You are only a vessel and a channel to be used by the Father through the Son, through the angels to minister to others who are in need of salvation. And by the way, as you minister to others, that ministration is also unto you. 
you get mature in your salvation. The angels come to soften our hearts. God will impress those whose hearts are open to truth and who are longing for guidance. He will say to his human agent, speak to this one or to that one of the love of Jesus. No sooner is the name of Jesus mentioned in love and tenderness, the angels of God draw near to soften and subdue the heart. This is Kolpotua ministry, page 111, verse 4. Uh, page 111, paragraph 4. So every time you go outside there and uh, you meet some brother, you meet a sister, and you start conversing with this sister or brother, and you tell them, have you heard about Jesus Christ and uh, his sacrifice for our sin, his atoning sacrifice? Have you ever read what John chapter 3 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him must may not perish but have everlasting life. The angels of heaven draw near and they start softening the heart of the person who we were talking to. And so it is the spirit which does conviction. You are only a channel through which those words are coming out. But the spirit of God is working on the heart of those who are receiving. And who is present there? The angels are whispering in a silent voice to this person hearing. This is the truth. This is the truth. And then the heart of this person is softened and uh, they, they can book you for a Bible study. And so we, we praise the Lord for these uh, heavenly beings. And uh, as we come to an end of this uh, deliberation, we have read about the Kolpotua and the Kanvasa. I'll not read it. I'll go to the next quote in uh, 111.2. Uh, when men realize the times in which we are living, they will work as in the sight, as in the sight of heaven. The converser will handle those books that will bring light and strengthen the soul. He will drink in the spirit of those books and will put his whole soul into the work of presenting them to the people. His strength is courage. His strength, his courage, his success will depend on how fully the truth presented in the books is woven in his own experience and developed in his character. When his own life is thus molded, he can go forward representing to others the sacred truth he is handling. Impued with the spirit of God, he will gain a deep rich experience and heavenly angels will give him success in the work. So I'll just pass over the canvasa. It speaks about how the angels of heaven are doing all they can to make sure that the canvasa is successful in his work. He had felt in he in the garden of Gets, he had felt it in the garden of Gethsemane when from his force were forced drops of blood, and where he would have died had not an angel been sent from the courts of heaven to invigorate the divine sufferer that he might uh, tread his blood stained path to Calvary. You know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would have said, "I'm the Son of God. I'm going back to heaven." But then looking at uh, what could have resulted there, he decided to go all through. And because all the sins of humanity was on him and he could not use any of his uh, divine powers, the angels, all the miracles and uh, the affliction for the suffering were done by the power of uh, uh, Christ by the ministration of angels. And so the angels also came uh, and, you know, if he had ever broken any promise he made to his father uh, that uh, he won't uh, and use any of uh, the divine powers or call forth the divine powers, then uh, uh, if he could have used that, then we could have perished. And so he had to go all the way as a human being so that we may get an example. The way he tapped into the father's power to overcome sin, we can only tap into the same. And when we call upon the Father, angels are sent, as even Jesus called upon the Father and the angels were sent to minister unto him. We have an advocate pleading in our behalf. The Holy Ghost is continually engaged in beholding our course of action. We need now keen perception that by our practical godliness, the truth may be made to appear truth as it is in Jesus. The angelic agencies are messengers from heaven, actually ascending and descending, keeping the earth in constant connection with the heaven above. 
This angel messengers are observing all our course of action. They are ready to help all in their weaknesses, weakness, guarding all from moral and physical danger according to the providence of God. And whenever souls yield to the softening, subduing influence of the spirit of God under this angel ministration, there is joy in heaven. The Lord himself rejoices with singing. Now, uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 260, Paragraph 1. Angels are helping in this work to restore the fallen and bring them back to the one who has given his life to redeem them. And the Holy Spirit is cooperating with the ministry of human agencies to arouse the moral powers by working on the heart, reproving sin of righteousness and judgment. Another quote, Tenemar 112, verse 2. Uh, paragraph two. All heaven is interested in your salvation and angels of God are waiting to do for you what they did for the early disciples on the day of Pentecost. Do your duty to your children and for those who are ignorant of truth. Carry out the teachings of the word in your homes. You must stand in harmony with the God of heaven if you will lay hold of divine power. Humanity may reach divinity through faith in Christ. Then humanity can reach out to humanity, imparting the hope of the gospel to souls who are perishing out of Christ. So angels of God are waiting to do for us what they did on the day of Pentecost. And we know that on the day of Pentecost, they brought the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You understand that angels are prophets. Angels have uh, the gifts of the Spirit and they have the fruit of the Spirit. And because they are the carriers of the same, the Lord has allowed them to give the same to the people who are in need. And we are waiting to see a greater manifestation of the angels during the loud cry. We are told that there will be a great power from heaven. Jesus will send the angels to be among us and they will be able to finish the work. We are told that uh, it will not be by the eloquence of our language. It will not be by our good grammar but it will be only by the action of the spirit, the angels of God will be amongst us. And no one will work under the instruction from literal institution, but God will take the reign in his own hands. In which way all heaven will be emptied of angels to minister unto the people who will be about to face the time of trouble as it has never been. And so, um, I'm rejoicing in the Lord, my God, because I know that uh, uh, at the end of the day, as even the angels ministered to the Ethiopian eunuch, that also uh, they will minister unto us. I want to read the last three quotes, and then we can close. And this is all about Zechariah chapter 4. Allow me to read three quotes, and then I'll be able to close this. Uh, we are told, the anointed one standing by the Lord of the whole heart have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub. By the holy being surrounding his throne, the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth. The golden oil represents the grace which God keeps the lamps of believers supplied that they will that they shall not flick and go out. Were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's spirit, the agencies of evil will have entire control over men. So the anointed ones standing by the Lord of the whole earth have the position once given to Satan as a covering cherub. And that are, that, those are angels. From the two olive trees, the golden oil was emptied through the golden pipes into the bowl of the candlestick and then into the golden lamps that gave light to the sanctuary. So from the holy ones that stand in God's presence, his spirit is imparted to human instrumentalities who are consecrated to his service. So through these angels, the oil of heaven, the Holy Spirit is imparted to us. The mission of the two anointed one is to communicate to God's people that heavenly grace, which alone can make his word alarm to the feet and a light to the path. 
and uh, the last thing here tm page 510 paragraph 1 from two olive trees, the golden oil was emptied through the golden pipes in the bowels of the candlestick and then into the golden lamps that gave light to the sanctuary. So from the holy ones that stand in God's presence, his spirit is imparted to human instrumentalities. Truth about angels, page 150, paragraph 2 and 3. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees? Upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof. And I thundered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of the, themselves? And he answered me and said, These are two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. The anointed ones standing by the whole Lord of the whole earth have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub. By the holy being surrounding his throne, the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth. Lastly, TM 188, 1 and 2. There are many who are laborers together with God whom we do not discern. The hands of ministers have never been laid. The hands of ministers have never been laid upon them in ordination for the work. But nevertheless, they are wearing the yoke of Christ and exert a saving influence in the working in different lines to win souls to Christ. Read, the, read and study the fourth chapter of Zechariah. The two olive trees empty the golden oil out of themselves through the golden pipes into the golden bowl from which the lamps of the sanctuary are fed. The golden oil represents the Holy Spirit. With this, oils, this oil, God's ministers are to be constantly supplied that they in turn may impart to it to, to church. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. God's servants can obtain victories only by inward purity, by cleanness of heart, by holiness. It is of the uttermost importance that ministers set a right example if they follow lax, loose principles. Their example is quoted by those who are doing wrong as a vindication of their cause. So angels have received no ordination from man but um, they are working as invisible servants for their salvation. I want to end by saying this. The Lord is gracious. And don't be discouraged. Put on the strength of the Lord. Put on the full arm of the Lord. All heaven is behind you to make sure that you overcome sin. and. Uh, May the good Lord continue impressing these things on our heart that um, we may know for surety that um, the Lord is with us and he is able to save us unto the uttermost by employing his servants to guide us and uh, to uh, 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 direct our paths and our footsteps. Shall we close with uh, a word of prayer? Thank you, our Heavenly Father, because thou, Jesus, you promised you shall be with us until the end of the age. And although you are invisible to us, yet we know that you are working for our salvation. And even though we cannot see the angels, we are so delightful that they are fellow servants, they are fellow brethren, they are fellow prophets working with us for the plan of salvation. And so help us to be encouraged as even they are kept from apostasy and they keep us from apostasizing, Lord, let us look forward in meeting them and being one church above in heaven. Thank you for your grace and thank you for holding the instruments that they may be used for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you for what you are doing for us. And Lord, we look forward when we shall send and empty all heaven for us during this time of the latter rain. Your name be glorified. Prepare us to be able to sound the loud cry. This is my request in Jesus' name. Amen.